more still. Yeah, that's hard. You're live. Okay. Welcome back. We got a cool name for the show this week. Uh, Howard Pierce, right? Yeah. Landmark stable, Ontario guy. Yeah. Uh, let Caroline know he thought that Creekside Chat would be a good name for this. We love it. Thank you, Howard. So we're just gonna roll right in, try to keep this down to you know, 20 or so minutes today, but we'll uh, let everybody go ahead and get in here so we can have a nice chat. Uh, what's new this week, Adam? <sighs> Not much, what have we done? We finally are gonna open the office doors, right? And get out a little bit and see some nice. horses, right? We yeah. saw some of our thoroughbreds this morning. Boy, we saw a Justify Philly out of a sister Caravaggio uh, that we might post on Facebook, but this is a tough, big, beastly looking filly. Yeah, for a filly that's only seven or 10 days old, it's pretty yeah. darn nice. Pretty exciting. So yeah. we've been out to some boarding farms, uh, doing some yearling inspections. That's pretty much what's new for us. Yeah, we're yeah. kind of rolling. Yeah. Um, we'll jump into our giveaway, okay? So a lot of you all uh, may be excited about this, but we're gonna go ahead and open up this contest right now. Come into the comments and name the answer to Adam's question from last week to win this creatine jacket. And Adam, go ahead and re, re, readdress your question. Okay, we'll so get this set up here when creatine diamond cre creatine. Yeah, jacket. when creatine was a yearling, he got injured and we had to withdraw him from the sale. And at the time, we weren't racing too many colts, and so I thought, you know, what am I going to do with a horse yeah. like him? So I offered him to people to come out and inspect and uh, gave, I basically tried to give him away to a handful of people. Actually, yeah. it was five people. And um, So what do they need to do to win this thing? Yeah, type in who you think I gave this horse to. All five of them turned him down. Just okay, to... let's go. Fire away in your guesses. Uh, anyone who you think Adam offered this horse to, and we'll see if anybody gets it right. If anybody gets it right, before the end of the show. Baby. Yeah, before whoever's the first. Show. Yeah. If you get it right after the first person, we'll try to get you a hat or some uh, stallion stickers or something. So fire those babies in. We're going to run into the show, and then we'll look back and see what guesses yeah, we had, right? Exactly. Maybe, Caroline, if you can help us. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So our topic today... Yeah, Bob Baffert. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Baffert, baby. So our topic today is, is pretty cool, a little bit different, um, and we'd like to talk about French trotting breed. Um, trying to dive into those bloodlines briefly. Talk about what Diamond Creek uh, has done already and is going to do in that bloodline. So, Adam, why don't you take it away? Yeah, so I, if people don't already know, the uh, French stud book is closed to mm -hmm. outside French breeders uh, and bloodlines. And I think over the course of the last hundred years or so, they've opened the book up at various times for a very select number of horses or select number of mares to be bred. Uh, and so... Um, but what they do is they'll send frozen semen or you can send a mare over and, and be bred on frozen semen or even fresh semen. But um, Lindy Farms has done this a handful of times and you know, Hanover stands, International Money, who's by Love You, is that right? Out of Money Maker? Money Maker. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, uh, following the sport, you know, trying to enter or uh, put some of these new bloodlines into the sport, I think is only helpful. Fran France did it. And I think some some smart breeders are, are starting to do it now. So we sort of piggybacked on that idea. And uh, we sent a mare over two years ago to be bred to Bold Eagle in France. And um, we have a two-year-old in training with Pear Emblem now that's a Bold Eagle cult. Anomaly, right? Yeah, Anomaly. Yeah. So kind of a different name for a it's different cool. type it's of horse. It's kind of a different way of going. And Pear's actually kind of catered a program to more fit his breeding. Exactly. Uh, yeah, we've been that, slow and yeah. methodical approach and knew that he's not going to be early as a two-year-old. And so, you know, we've we've given Pear the the freedom to, yeah. to do it, you know, how he sees fit. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've also, uh, we took a Muscle Hill maiden mare last, two years ago? Two years ago and sent to France to be bred to FaceTime Bourbon, who... Uh, ended up winning the Prix de Marique this year at five, which mm -hmm. is about as young as you'll see a, yeah. a, a I mean, winner. And what was the average age of horses he was oh. facing in the Prix de Marique? I Older mean, than he is, quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, uh, with a lot more experience. Yeah, exactly. And so, so we had bought a share in him, 
Oh, you did? Share in him. I think I knew that, yeah. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. So we were part of that. Um, and so we had a cult born this year out of the mayor, and her name's with me always. Um, Tell us a little bit about her family. So Yeah, so if you know. watched uh, Twos in Training the other day with Paul Kelly, he's a big fan of that family. And Is we he? actually owned the filly, and he ended up training her. And uh, he has a two-year-old brother to that mayor named the Bread Man that's supposed, the bread to, be, man. supposed to be good. So keep an eye on the Bread Man. Uh, so we left the mayor over there to be bred again uh, to FaceTime Bourbon. And then once she's in full, we'll bring them back over here and... There'll most likely be some home brands to race. Yeah, we're excited. So do you plan to do anything more in France? I mean, you have the share in FaceTime bourbon. Like, after this mare's bred, what, what are your plans? Like I said, we'll bring the mare home, but uh, I think we'll end up continuing to breed over there. I mean, FaceTime bourbon's a ready cash out of a love you mare, which seems to be the golden cross over there. I, I think Bold Eagle's bred on the same cross as, as that. And... You know, Love You seems to be the type of horse that um, that they've sent frozen semen to New Zealand, and he's mm -hmm. populated that market as well. So it seems yeah. to be the type of horse that could do that. Yeah. Well, I know there was a Love You yearling that I absolutely love that I kept pushing in yeah. yearling sale. I couldn't quite pull the trigger, yeah, but somebody did. Harry Soderberg yeah, yeah. has um, has that horse trained at Millennium Farm. I think he's he's quite athletic. Probably one of the best yearling videos I saw. I think the uh, dam is Tangled Sheets. I'm not, I can't remember right? exactly, but uh, just a, family, a right? vicious yeah. horse in the paddock. So yeah. anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to talk about with the French trotters, except for the racing breeding side on the, with the stallions. Yeah, I mean, I'm not as breed. familiar with it as I kind of want to be. I mean, a bunch of these guys that are our age have gone mm -hmm. over now, and I think that's one of those dream trips for, mm -hmm. for me and you. Yeah, for to, sure. To do once this quarantine thing lifts. But. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned to me about how uh, when Father Patrick had to race and breed in New Jersey, uh, in the same season, how you re actually reached out to some French contacts yeah, to learn. Not not always just French guys, mm -hmm. but the, the guys in Europe, and it seems to be that they do that thing more often. And so we, we took some advice from uh, some of the guys that had done that and tried to model Father Patrick's season. Mm -hmm after that and and it started out successfully i mean he came back and won the maxi lee at chester i mean uber impressive and then ended up with a, a deep-seated lung infection that we just couldn't shake the rest of the year but you know it's it the plan worked i mean we mapped out a plan that that we thought worked and and jimmy did did great by the horse yeah and now we get to watch better's wish uh, on the pacing side yeah he's gonna attempt uh, dual, it this year dual so. role stallion yeah. and race horse i like it Good stuff. Well, we got some excellent questions this week. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's got our brains ticking, and we've enjoyed thinking about how we might answer some of these. So, if we don't get to all of them, apologize. There's some that uh, definitely will make for good topics for another show. But we want to go through here and ask answer some of these great questions that we got. Starting out with Tyler Miller in Indiana. He's a client of Diamond Creek and a shareholder, and we appreciate you, Tyler. Uh, wanted to ask the question, Adam, here. His question is, who are some notable mares booked to Captain Crunch this season, first-year stallion? Yeah, so Captain Crunch, just an amazing response from the breeders. I mean, we ended up selling basically half of the horse, 50% of the horse we syndicated, nearly 60 shares. And the response for contracts have... Yeah. I mean, they started as early as we announced, and they continue even now after he's been slammed shut for a while. Um, it's probably not appropriate for me to name other people's mayors, but uh, some of our mayors are uh, Blood Diamond, who mm -hmm. has produced the good three-year-old for us last year, Blood Money, and a couple other good colts as well. 100% um, producer, right? Exactly. I mean, so far, she is the gold standard for us at this point uh, with consistency and everything. Uh, also, Ginger and Fred, who ended up making a million, like a million nine, almost two million dollars, and she's the dam of proof. Uh, and then we also have a sister to Pure Country that we bred. Uh, um, we get a lot of nice mares. When we have ten yeah. mares that we ended up, well, we ended up booking thirteen, but um, you know the demand was so high that we took some of our own mares off to allow. Yeah. Uh, you know, some some good outside mares in. So we're really happy with this book. Mm. Um, I don't know that we could have picked a better group of mayors, really. I'm excited to, to start. Appreciate everybody's support. Yeah, you know? it's been great. Um, 
won't name names, but some uh, folks that own uh, many, many pacing brood mares have, have gone and gone all in with us. And Which is great. I mean, we love kind of Very good like for that, the stallion. So. so let's do it again next year and let's let's uh, hope these foals look great. And we'll, we'll onward and upward with him. All, all right, right. I'm going to ask you something yeah. now. So Tyler again says, what is the stallion outlook for working on a mystery? Mm, love that horse. Uh, you bought into this horse with... Um, the group that owned him originally uh, towards the end of his two-year-old season. Yeah. Uh, he was four for four, maybe five for five after jug day. And uh, the group is fantastic. I mean, everybody from the Wingfield brothers on has just Stand been really even. fun. Yeah, yeah Stan. Enjoying uh, being around them. And they're really close with Brian Brown, who we start to, you know, get closer and closer to every year, it seems like. Yeah. So working on a mystery, um, I think his issues last year, um, health wise were well publicized, you know, um, that's the one good thing about Brian is that yeah. you ask him a question, you're going to get the direct and honest answer. I mean, no, no filter. Any exactly. So, Which I like, yeah. I want to hear it. Oh, if your horse is good, it's good. If they're bad, yeah. I want to hear it. So. Don't need to go into his issues. We could have stood him in a place like Indiana, uh, for this season. Uh, we had interest from good farms in Indiana, uh, such a fast, um, tough, Captain Treacherous colt, right? Yeah. So we opted to roll on. So we're rolling on here. I just yeah. think he didn't quite meet the potential, you know, the, yeah. that line that we set where we want to stay on the horse, and he just didn't quite fit that bill. So Yeah, and his earnings number, um, you just on paper, it just looks a little low to have a prominent stud, right? Sure. And so we still think that his talent is so high. Brian has got him back at Delaware County Fairgrounds. I'm pretty sure Ashley Dowis, uh, his caretaker's got him again, taking good care of him this year. And uh, everything is is on plan and going forward for him to have a, uh, a big four-year-old campaign. So fingers crossed. Thanks for that, Tyler. Now let me ask you, Jenna McNiven, uh, this is the uh, daughter of Tammy McNiven, uh, and I believe Rob as well, um, their daughter, but it's Twinbrook Farm. Ontario, uh, quality breeders, hard work, integrity, uh, had a banner year last year at Harrisburg. I think they were well paid for doing great work and we really appreciate all of their uh, support for us and, and they're just great people. Yeah. Um, but Jenna is uh, the up and comer in the family operation and she had some great questions. So Adam, put you on the spot here, great questions. What do you look for when you are in the market to buy a broodmare? Mm -hmm. What is your criteria? Okay. for your band do you have favorite broodmare sire do you look at unraced mares with great pedigrees is age a factor and is there a bloodline you really like wow. now that's, that's loaded now based on their yearling sale i should probably be asking her this question instead of the vice versa but I'll, I'll give it a whirl so what do we look for when when they're at when we're in the market for buying broodmares i mean it starts with the pedigree page right i mean that's what everybody looks at first at the yearling sale and you sort of uh you know, mark your, you, you shortlist horses based on pedigree sure. first, and then, then you kind of go through there. So we start there. For us, it we have like two different categories, right? We have our mares that we race, mm -hmm. their offspring, and then we have horses that we sell. And so, you know, our horses meet different criteria based mm -hmm. on, on, those, on those two things. But pedigree first, confirmation is maybe 1A, 1B. Mm -hmm. I mean... You can have a great page, and we do this all the time at the sale. You start with 20 horses, you start with 30 horses on your list, you start going through, and all of a sudden you're down to two, three, four. Yeah. I mean, confirmation is extremely important, as we've found over the years. To, and then again, taking that confirmation and then matching it to the stallion's confirmation yeah. as well, because we started doing this a handful of years ago, and it's starting to pay dividends now mm -hmm. um, in the sales ring and on the racetrack. But What about an unraced mare? Uh, that's a key question there. In that, sure. And again, if she's a sister to, if there's quality in the pedigree, I have zero problem buying an unraced mare. Yeah. In, in fact, we've had good luck doing yeah, that. Have. Do you try to get some info about, okay, she's unraced. Why is she unraced? Did she have some talent? I mean, does that play into your thinking? Sure. You have to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I think reaching out to the trainers. I mean, the good part about being at those mix sales is basically they're yeah. all there anyway. You can track down mm -hmm. Irv Miller, Casey Coleman, Nancy Tacker, whoever it is. And, and, and pick their brain. And I think yeah. if you don't do that, you're doing it, doing yourself a disservice. I know from being with you at the mix sales that you really hard dial in down on the, the mayor's confirmation. Yeah. And that's a, probably the 
being around you um, equal to the pedigree and a lot of, well, I think it, they have to qualify pedigree wise. Right. And then they go through the grinder on confirmation. And so. we're hard. We're, we're hard because at this point we have 75 mayors and we don't need mm -hmm. another mayor unless she, unless we can add her to the top and we can subtract one from the bottom. And that's sort of been the motto is mm -hmm. get rid of the bottom 10% and then add to what we think is the top 10%. So to help Jen a little bit more, I know age and fold crop number uh, are important to you. Mm -hmm. you. Can you touch on that quickly? Yeah, I think most people prefer maidens or a mm -hmm. mayor that's carrying a first fold or a young mayor. I think once you get past a certain number of folds, and that's it's sort of a subjective thing as to mm -hmm. what's too many, ma you know, sure. too many falls, but there's gotta be, you have to set that limit, okay? I'm not gonna buy anything more than X. Mm -hmm. um, and you wanna be a commercial breeder because yep. unfortunately yearling buyers are picky and they want mm -hmm. horses early falls, yeah. right? They want the first, second, third falls. And then if there's some production, they don't mind buying some later right. ones. But you know, you, you try to stick to younger mares with mm -hmm. good confirmation and make sure you go see the sires. The more sires you see, the better. Great uh, you know, you can look at the mares all you want, but mm -hmm. if they don't match up to the stallions, then you're yeah. you know. We encourage people to come look at our stallions in Pennsylvania. Just not right now. Yeah, just not right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so go ahead uh, and let's jump down here to a few more questions. And we'll um, Want me to ask you get, one? Yeah, go ahead. All right. All right, so Wayne Comerford is going to ask you, how are they always be Mickey's doing? Oh, Wayne, um, you know, <laughs> ask, for ask your nearest <laughs> trainer and let's see what they say. Yeah. You hear very few adverse reports. You hear um, glowing reports, as you do about many two-year-olds at this, at this stage. However, their eye, these trainers' eyes seem to light up. They seem to have a little bit more confidence in the Mickey's than other first crop sires. Um, we know that Brian Brown has a filly he loves. Um, we know that Irv Miller has a filly he loves. We know that Nancy Tactor has a barrage of Mickeys that she's. But I mean, even training, she was on so. Facebook the other day answering Murray Brown's post about yeah. you know your best horses and laying them out right now. And one of the top three pacing colts that she has right now is an Always Be Mickey. So yeah, we love it. Let's keep it going and let's hope for the best. And we need to get back to racing for the the Mickey train to keep rolling. But, um, you know, you can hear from other people than us, but everything we hear is positive. So we, as you would expect at this point, but it seems to be a little bit more yeah. than what yeah. we, what we've heard from some of the other stallions that we've put out there over the last couple of years. Yeah. I think, uh, that's right from the horse's mouth because, uh, me, my experience is a little bit more limited, but you've heard about first crop stallions before. And you say to me, there's just, there's being spoke about with a little bit more confidence than, and it was most. early too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were in Florida in February talking to Brian and he was certain that his best mm -hmm. horse was an always be Mickey Philly. And, and, you know, we talked to her and his daughter and their, their best horse at the time had been a, was an always be Mickey Philly. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know, maybe they were blowing smoke up our ass. I don't know. That but, does happen. Sure. You know, I mean, people want to tell us that our stallions are doing really good. I get that. But they don't but, have anything invested in yeah. that. So uh, just so everybody knows, we'd rather hear, the bad news or the, the brutal truth always. No, so, the truth, not yeah. bad news. <laughs> we yeah. want the truth. <laughs> bad news is never good, but no filter we love. So um, if you're ever dealing with us, please give us the no filter responses. So we're where are we at time-wise? Okay, so we're 19 minutes in, so we've got a little bit more time for a few more questions, and I think we'll go on down. I'm going to ask you here. This is from Lynn Prentice, and she sent us several great questions, which I'm sure we'll touch, down, touch on on weeks to come, but this yeah. is... Would your stallion selection change with your own mare, depending on if you're going to sell that mare at auction or sell that yearling at auction or keep it to race? So, breeding commercial versus breeding to race. Um, how does your stallion selection change? Because it does change. Yeah, we have a certain group of mares that are we consider call them our homebred mares, and then we have another group of mares, and it's the majority of them that are the sale horses, mm -hmm. right? And you're breeding commercially, it is, you're trying to pick stallions that the market is gonna like three years later, which yeah. again, you're wrong sometimes, and you know, hopefully you guess right. I mean, we got a lot of young stallions in the tech, so we're, we're trying to support them, but at the same time, we're trying to guess what the, the public is gonna want. And then with the homebred mares, it's more like, we want race success, yeah. right? And so we're picking stallions that may not necessarily be commercial, mm -hmm. but 
they still fit what we're looking for because we're still trying to produce top end horses. And so a lot of times they are the same stallions. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a horse like Better's Delight, we were just having this conversation mm -hmm. yesterday, kind of going through the numbers. We have a Better's Delight filly that yeah. she doesn't quite fit the bill commercially, right? Being a Better's Delight out, of, a, tell out of an older out? mare. Yeah. You know, she's had eight, ten foals already west of L.A., west right? Of LA. She's the dam of somewhere in L.A. Mm -hmm. or in L.A. Delight and Sunny D. We bought her from Bob McIntosh two years ago, a year or so ago. And... And she's got a better light feel, like gorgeous filly, right? But you look at what they're going to bring at the sale, and it's basically you're limited by the price. And so for us, what we're looking to do, she's the type of filly that fits into our homebred ranks a lot yeah, better. It's like a, a, a physical for yeah. us. And, and physical. pedigree. And yeah. she would click a lot of boxes for people, but I think stallion-wise, she's held back just ever so slightly. Not necessarily that better than light that can't get you a great horse on a track, because he has the last couple of oh, years. Yeah. Uh, with Better's Wish and Told Our Stranger and Stag Party and a whole herd of others. I mean, Casey's had a bunch of good ones. Yes, she has. Betty so, Martin. yeah, better than Cheddar. Good. So, uh, I'll ask you one more from Lynn Prentice here. Do you feel that some sires um, are limited in their ability to have a good book of mares because they stood in New York, a state where mares must be in the state physically to be bred? Yeah, I think that is the thing about New York, and we tried that this year. I mean, we went and had a lease agreement with mm -hmm. a farm. We had done the deal for... Um, Lather Up? <laughs> what an idiot, I can't remember. Uh, so we, we tried Lather Up in New York, and it didn't work. I mean, we, we prompted everybody. We, we tested everybody, and really the market said Ohio. And so mm -hmm. we sort of walked ourselves back out of that mm -hmm. deal. Um, maybe, a little, Sugar Valley. maybe a little egg on the face for us, but it ended up working out great for Joe in Ohio. At Sugar Valley, and he's, I think he's going to end up reading a full book there with the, with the price right. Yeah. Um, but New York is tough. Mm -hmm. The right horse has to stand there. Um, you know, Blue Chip is really in a great spot being that's their home base, mm -hmm. and so they, they reach a lot of clients, and I think it's going to be a tough market to, to enter into. But if we, if we do, and I think we've talked about it, it has to be the right horse. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think horses, they're limited. Because yeah. people are, people are hesitant to send mm -hmm. their send their mares to New York, especially if that's not their home base. Yeah. While well, Chapter Seven has overcome that limitation. Yeah, and Art Major did, and Better's Delight yeah. did uh, for a while, and then mm -hmm. they they ended up sending him to Ontario when his brother got there. But mm -hmm. well, that's great. So oh, I think we did a good job uh, hitting some of the top questions we had this week. But there's some others we want to save for some good topics about some really dialed in detailed stallion specifics we like. want to talk about stallion personalities and different things going yeah. forward so check on facebook like us keep commenting where are we at with this creatine giveaway we've got lots of good guesses on here uh can you name a few well, candace jablonski thinks bob baffert or chad brown <laughs> candace <laughs> is a thoroughbred girl I, I know that um we've had lots of good guesses uh one right answer we did get a, we, we someone got a, guessed we, it? We got a right answer right Are here. Are you kidding? Yep, right here. Who is Pat Waldo? So Pat, Pat Waldo Pat was Waldo one of the was people? one of the people that turned creatine down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who got that? Steve Estep. Steve Estep. We're going to have to get you this be, creatine that jacket. That might be inside information. <laughs> no, I didn't know the answer. <laughs> I truly did not. Steve's been around the game a long time, so... And he's also your father-in-law. He is. <laughs> so. He is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to ask him how he figured that one out. Exactly. So. Maybe I told him one point. I don't know. <laughs> you got a big mouth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But Pat Waldo wow, was against everybody. Yeah. Ron Burke got a guess. Of. Bob Baffert got a guess. Linda. So that is the only right answer. That was huh? the only right answer so far. So. Brilliant. Steve Eastman yeah. with the jacket. If anyone uh, guesses one of the other five, uh, you'll be in line for a hat or a pack. Yeah. Of so keep stickers. leaving. Keep leaving us answers. We'll keep yeah. checking and. Uh, Send in your questions, yeah, like, comment, do. follow Diamond Creek, and uh, we'll hopefully see you all at some sales or some races soon. Thanks Signing to off. Howard Pierce Thanks for the Howard. name again, and we'll be back next Wednesday at noon. Yeah, Thanks. stay healthy, everybody. All right, have a good all one. Right. Bye, guys.